Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Aetheris. Um, but just to get this out of the way, key provided by the uh, publishing company or the dev themselves. Uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is a very curious looking game. It's got some chops in terms of its aesthetic and it's also got some really compelling and a little bit mixed up um, mechanics. It's a bit of a... Uh, darkest dungeon-ish game, but it's got some uh, roguelike stuff uh, going on as well. It's it's interesting, and we're gonna get into it. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start a new game, and then I will show you what a currently in progress game looks like. So we'll have a look at the choices that we make, as well as the uh, various mechanics, as well as some, uh, you know s some of the story. There isn't a lot of story, at least not so far for me. Uh, but it's it's got some interesting stuff Yesterday the world cracked open four Vazard warriors were enjoying a gnat stew when the earth began to shake the Sky filled with clouds and a huge black mass burst from the mountain above their village the shade began to spread War, uh, Brave warriors chose to examine it more closely Spooky So yeah, this game's got a, a very beautiful style i have to say uh it, it feels almost like a shadow puppet style uh sort of a uh, look and feel but it's it's very colorful um it's it's really cool i gotta say it's it's got this like really beautiful like storybook look to it um i i will say like i don't know if it's fair to say yet, but I, I have say, uh, I have felt that the, it kind of gets in the way a little bit of, of readability, but um, so far I, I have found things pretty easy to pick up. The tutorial is like a very, very quick. I can go through this tutorial, but honestly, it'd be quicker if I just explain things myself. Uh, it's not a incredibly deep game, although it's got deepness to it. So, ahead of the warriors, the shade has engulfed everything. The road, the ground, even the sky. Lightning and, uh, lightning and growls burst out of the strange, opaque fog that faces them. To find out what it is, they have only one choice. Move forward. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run away while there is still time. The terrified warriors consider heading back to the village. But one does not simply walk away from the shade. The evil shade catches up with them and swallows them up. Others will have to pick up the torch. We'll see. I'm not sure what that like. We're skip that. It just meant we we skipped the tutorial. But I I wonder if it would show us anything. It looks like it didn't. The warriors never made it back. Something emerged from the shade, eating them alive, spreading panic. Is this the cataclysm the prophecy spoke of? The shade keeps spreading. It is now up to you to take action. You and three other Vazards have offered to seek a safe path, a path to help the village escape the wilderness. Make haste. The shade quickly catches up with anyone leaving the village. So, we have uh, our village and it is loading this is i guess uh what i mean like i feel like this i'm not sure like how this game has been optimized and i'm not a programmer so i can't say but i i will say that there there is a lot of loading screens and they're just a little bit longer than one would like when you're playing a game like this um i feel like this should be a pretty easy breezy game and it is um but i didn't i definitely spend a little bit longer than i would like waiting um for things to load but uh with that being said it's it's not too bad um so what we're doing right now is we're, we're gonna pick a party of four vazards <clears throat> you can do this yourself or you can go and uh just like have it suggest party members to you we've got a pool of uh some vazards they these guys all um i feel i, I don't think they're like generated i think these are very handcrafted um, but you know, we can we can throw some lads together that you see that you might see that on the right there They have some varying stats uh, And we can uh, give them a spirit now It'll tell you, you know, Vazards absorb absorb the spirit to cheat death Vazard can reroll when evolving 
Uh, adding spirit will change the following. And then the Vazard can cannot take risky decisions. Now, these are different from when I was playing on my own. It said something like they cannot, um, they, you know, they cannot be re, uh, reborn or something like that. But, uh, so these, these have, um, varying stats and they offer a boon. Now, what these spirits are, are actually the, um, the spirits of your previously dead adventures. These are actually the four, as as I understand it, the four adventures that I, we started the game, the ones that I would have done the tutorial with. So uh, this is basically your meta progression, and the game uh, sees fit to give you a couple to start with. When you uh, progress your game with, you know, uh, a, a bunch of adventures and then they die, they'll come back as spirits and they can have some pretty interesting effects. I'm just going to pick them. I'm not going to try and optimize anything too much right now. And you might see um, I'm also not optimizing the levels of our parties. I like to mix up uh, low levels with high levels um, and therefore our low levels will hopefully be carried and level up over time. But yeah, I'm not trying too hard to optimize things. Uh, we have our sanctuary. I'm not sure what this means. Oh, is that just... Okay. We're gonna go. So yeah, that is our, our meta progression. I kind of like um, how that works. Like, our, you know, our, our party members die and then help our future party members. Uh, and in the tutorial, at least um, one, like, Vazard almost dies and then is resurrected by the you know the spirit that they were carrying which is kind of neat um you can i guess uh decide not to carry a spirit and there's going to be benefits to either doing so or not doing so but uh so far i've just sort of given everyone a spirit and and said you know whatever to the whole thing this is it you've just got out of the village you're trembling in excitement adventure calls even though you don't know which way to go <clears throat> so this is my vague understanding of things. This part is not tutorialized, so I'm just going to go ahead and give you my theory. But you've got four, four major stats in this game, or four major traits with each character. Uh, mysticism, empathy, uh, I believe it's just a rationale, and then brutalism. Um, and in each of these events at the bottom, you we we have a different leader so you'll see uh after each event our our like party members will kind of shuffle around a little bit and i'm pretty sure the one in uh, the second runner will will take the lead so what you want to do is kind of um recall which of their major traits they have so i i'm not even really sure to be honest i could look at the character sheet and yeah, so we can see mysticism, empathy, rationale, and brutalism. They're all pretty much on par. So there isn't really any benefit. But remembering, uh, or at least like looking at that stat, will tell us which one we're going to have the best chance of succeeding at. I think. That's my theory anyway. Um, and I think it is proven to be pretty, pretty good so far. So we're just going to go ahead and pick one. I picked um, gather food at the nesting pond, which seemed to be okay. Let's try try pay a visit to the watchtower. So you'll watch. Um, yeah. So the front two swapped around. I'm not sure, you know, how that worked, but there it is. On your way to the watchtower, you spot something on the road. The corpses of three Vazards are lying there. Their faces frozen in terror. The shade, no doubt. Their faces are familiar. You knew them since you hatched from your egg. So again, uh, no one has any traits yet, so we can, you know, pick stuff, shake the sadness away and get moving. It might be also that uh, we're kind of picking traits for our characters by picking those uh, various options. You're trying to be strong, but the feelings of shared memories gets the better of you. You didn't even close their eyes. So yes, this is what a failure of these events look like, and, and yeah, they can have permanent effects on your characters. It's best not to, to dwell on it too much. And we're going to have our first combat coming up here. Get ready to fight. We don't have any uh, stuff in our inventory, so we'll just kind of get get into it. Combat is uh, pretty breezy. I, I, there is strategy, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much you can really optimize. You can throw everyone in, at, you know, in, in the same direction, for, for instance. These are all kind of a shared placement pool. 
um, so you can you can kind of drop anyone anywhere. Um, I, I I don't get to you know super, I guess like optimal about it. We'll go ahead and ready up. Here's our initiative. Um, it's a little bit funky, but it, it's more or less just D and D. So our character here, he has a, uh, a move I haven't seen before. The target gains plus two MP for two turns. This costs uh, none of the stats. You'll see in the bottom left, we have three different stats. Um, basically, these are movement and then um, physical attack and then mysticism attacks or spirit attacks. Uh, the spirit or you want to call it MP if you like, um, it doesn't recover after combat. You'll have to like make use of campsites to recover that so it's a very scarce resource don't use it or don't overuse it uh so we're just gonna uh, honestly i'd like to just keep them there i'm not sure how uh, like uh, how far these guys move they seem to have two movements so maybe they'll move towards us but um let's just see how that goes so yeah they have two movement the old uh, wait for them to come to us tactic works well almost every time. Uh, we'll move up to them and then we'll use our flaying sword. Inflicts 12 to 18 physical damage. And we can see that uses up all of our physical um, kind of stat. And that is our turn done for that character. So this character has a couple of bizarre stuff. Gives plus 3 to 6 strength to for all allies for 3 turns. Um, this is use this uses up uh, movement points to do, which is actually not a terrible thing. Um, inflicts physical damage to the target and yourself receives bleeding. Negative three HP per turn for three turns. The fact that this hurts us is kind of a bummer. Um, and then we have strike. So honestly, let's do a war cry. That seems like a good one. We'll buff ourselves up and. Uh, yeah, we'll move, uh, we'll make a move. Um, let's move slightly away so that, again, they'll have to come to us. And we'll move over here. This one's got target receives plus two AP for one turn, plus one SP and is healed. Oh, wow, it's a healing. And uh, it's got quite a good range. So why don't we go ahead and give this to uh, the next person to uh, go, which is more Korea. Since they can't attack them, uh, you know, use their, their own action to attack them as well. I guess the initiative is over. Okay, so we've got our lad here. They can actually um, attack some stuff and they've got increased strength. So let's let's get in there and beat something up. Inflicts five to th uh, six physical damage. We'll go ahead and do that. We won't have enough... Um, moves or action points or whatever you want to call it physical points to do it again but we can do it once and that's good enough target gains two plus two mp that's magic power so that means they'll do more damage with their uh magical abilities let's uh get in there and that way we'll be a little bit safer from this guy over here you do block um you know like you have a physical space on the board so uh it's good to make use of that so that was a really good attack we managed to kill that lad that was probably the increased strength given to our other given to us by our other lad um is anyone hurt yeah this lad so we could go come in here and then heal them this oh it does cost one spirit point so we are kind of burning spirit points by using that so let's not let's not do that again we can always heal them later if we feel like it Okay, a fresh initiative and things are looking pretty good. Let's move this guy over to the back. I don't think that there's any benefit to that, except that um, we make room for the other party members to come in and attack. We're still doing really good um, damage. Come in and do some damage and that's it. And that's combat. We'll get some experience points. Everyone will get some experience points. You can see we have one level zero. He'll probably level up. Um, the amount of experience it takes to level up does accelerate or, uh, it, you know, increase. So now we're picking a stat for this person. We can see they have good strength and good uh, defense. So, and they only have the one uh, attack. So I think brutal uh, brutality would be a good one for them. You get uh, have to go 
straight to the point without detour or concession i do think that it's probably good to have a uh, like a mix and match of all four um for your party so their stat um they could get plus 20 critical damage which is really nice or plus two initiative uh i like that critical damage i think that'll be good and then here's a uh, fairly novel mechanic is we have a deck of 12 active skills and 12 passive skills uh and we're gonna be picking basically like you know one or the other like we could we could go for two active skills or two passive skills or one active skill and one passive skill and then uh, after we've picked like what we want to choose from then we're gonna be flipping both and then picking which one we want to uh, You know make permanent for that character active, you know And it's pretty obvious like what it, what you're picking like active skills. There's skills like flaying sword like attacks uh, movement um, spells stuff like that and then uh, passive skills can actually affect the entire party, which is really cool. Now this is a this is a this green one here means that it's actually uncommon. So we're more likely to I'm more likely to want to go with that, but I like to to throw in an active skill just in case. So this is a pretty common um, passive skill. I've seen it a few times. It gives plus two initiative to all party. That's really good. I like that a lot. But uh, increased defense by one to three, plus strength for two uh, turns. That is really quite good, and it does kind of benefit them. Um, I'm not sure how much, like, what their pool... Oh, okay, they have four points, and this costs two. So yeah, let's go for this uh, plus two initiative, and that'll be a permanent thing for them. And everyone benefits from that, so that's quite good. And then we get one thing, like item. Nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything can be turned into a weapon with a practical mind. So this is a, a weapon and it gains, uh, gives plus two magical power. Which is good, I'm sure someone can use that. Although no one seems to have any magical attacks yet. This is something we can rectify for sure. So I'm going to do a couple events. I might do one more combat in uh, this fresh game and then I'm going to move back to my other game and show you what an in-progress uh, game looks like. Basically, I have an in-progress game that uh, where I have progressed this entire bar and made it to the next area. Um, so here, you'll th this will seem very familiar for a lot of people, is uh, this campsite, you can either rest and, and fully heal your party. Uh, you can pray, in which case I believe you uh, re recover all of your um, sort of magical points run i'm not sure what that oh that basically we're giving buying ourselves more time by escaping the shade uh these are this isn't how many days we spent this is actually how many days we have left over every time we do one of these kind of events we're spending some days and then the, the shade is slowly catching up to us so by running we're, we're buying ourselves more time but uh, we have plenty of time left so so why don't we go ahead and train and we'll actually level up two of our party members by doing that I've spent a lot of these campsites uh, recovering health. Um, it's just one of those things. I don't think that this is a game you should you should play to win necessarily. It's a kind of a game to. It, it's a bit more casual. You're you're going to be spending a bit bit of time, uh, just kind of mulling over choices and like training up some party members, and uh, you know you're given some difficult choices, which is is actually pretty interesting. So this character seems to already be, um, you know, they, they seem to be empathetic. Let's gonna, let's lean in on that and make them more empathetic. This definitely, I think, has an effect on what kind of stat bonuses they're given. So we can uh, increase their dodge or their max HP. Let's go ahead and increase their dodge. I like that idea. And we'll uh, pick from a party, uh, a pool of active or passive. This one, uh, for one magical point, and they do, they only have four, um, Heals all adjacent targets and cancels any bleeding and poison effects. This is quite a good effect. The group gains 15 dodge for one turn when you kill an enemy. Well, that's that's interesting. Uh, let's take this soothing swarm and I'll see if I can't um, increase their mysticism in the future. And this lad has good mysticism, and we want them to have good mysticism because they have that energy transfer, which is really quite good. They could inc we can increase their power, their magic power. I think I'd like to increase their magic HP. They, they don't really have any magic attacks. Oh, wow. 
this is the first like legendary active skill I've seen. I kind of don't want to spend this uh, passive skill because I'm very likely to want to take this. So I'll just go ahead and spend this um, common active. Gives six AP to an ally for one turn. Wow. Or, oh God, I have to say I am tempted. This is a, a very decent spell, but uh, how can I say no? How can I say no to time shift? That sounds really cool. Again, I, I really like the artwork in this game. And I have to say the actions uh, are, are compelling. Like they're, they're actually kind of interesting. I haven't seen them like a thousand times before. The spot, you spot a light of a campfire away from the main road. A daunting figure is arched above it, staring at the flames. Your presence still hasn't been noticed. So this is uh, Raza Dios uh, who's doing this. They are brutal. We don't really have a brutal. Your inner spirit prevents you from making this choice. Far too risky. Oh, okay. Uh, well, they don't... Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, watch them from a distance. Thinking they are alone, the stranger takes off uh, their coat. What you see underneath makes you hold a scream. They have no scales. After observing them for a while, you silently walk away with a lot of questions and no answers. Well, that sucks. I will say that those uh, those little events do feel a little bit vague. I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to approach them. You're finally at the watchtower, but something's wrong. A black and gooey mud with an acrid f a smell drops from the door. Looks like the shade has already claimed this place. So this pl uh, person is em neither empathetic nor rational, but let's um, flee the tower. You're running away with all your strength where, wherever you can go, as long as it's not that corrupted place. When you finally come back to your senses, you realize that you have no idea where you are. It takes you time to finally get back on the right track. Well, uh, apparently, I really don't know what to do with all those because I am making all of the incorrect choices. Maybe they are just all bad. Who can say? But let's do one more combat. We'll uh, equip some stuff. We only have the bone stick. Um... Let's, uh, who got the time shift? This person, let's go ahead and give them the uh, bone stick. And then we have an extra flaying sword. Is, does anyone need a flaying sword? Um, yeah, this person could use a, well, actually, hold on, Brogs. Brogs doesn't have a weapon, so yeah, they could definitely use a flaying stick. I like to put people as close as possible so that I don't have to spend a lot of time uh, waiting for for them to, you know, get in. Uh, I do like to prioritize initiative because then I get to go in and, and attack first, which is quite nice. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll jump in. We'll do some attacks. Um, so what's the range on this pretty pretty far so wait uh but it does take two movements so i should uh, what what i can yeah let's do it first so we'll time shift this lad just to see it in action because uh you know i'm not going to spend too much longer in this uh on this save would have been cool if we could have uh killed that lad Your target gains plus two mp uh, we can give that to... Well, uh, no one has any magical attacks still. So we won't worry about that too much. So our lad here, he's got a lot of AP now. Um, so he can go in. Uh, and actually... Uh, yeah, why don't we do this bloody fight? Which will make them bleed. It'll give, uh, make us bleed as well. But, you know, we can we can take it. And we'll do a, a flaying sword. And we'll do another bloody fight. So we took a lot of damage there. Since we, we applied bleeding to ourselves More than once. Uh, we can do an energy transfer. This will also heal. I don't mind spending some of our, uh, you know, spirit points. We can always get those back later. Much later, but, you know later all the same let's kill this lad and then make our way over here 
And honestly, just providing the enemy with an extra target so that they aren't constantly ragging on the same uh, uh, party member isn't a terrible way to doing the, in playing this game. Like you, you want to mitigate damage, not just to like your party, but like to any one single party member. You don't want anyone to die because that would be bad. Uh, no one levels. No one levels up. A couple of people are close, but no one levels up. Bone stick and a flaying axe. Nice. With each step you take, you feel the comforting presence of the ancestral spirits. They have always watched over the village. You know that they are they will accompany you until the end of your journey. Okay. So we've seen what a couple combats look like. Why don't we go ahead and uh Oh. I, I quit the whole game. I meant to exit the menu. Give me one second. All right, so we're going to look at what um, an in-progress game looks like with a different set of party members. The Augur's Mountain. So we're in the second area, and the shade is quite uh, hot on our heels. So we're probably going to want to spend uh, at least one campsite fleeing from it. Let's see what uh, some events in the Augur's Mountain looks like. You're following a path near the foot of the mountain, accompanied by a river which soon parts way with you through the rocks. Screams can be heard ahead on the road. So our fellow here, he has quite a lot of mysticism. So let's try following the road, uh, the river. You go with the river. Uh, I guess... That is our, we're actually selecting the destination for our full thing here, so that might not have been wise. The river flows inside a cave in which you discover several tombs and graves carved out of the walls. This is uh, most peculiar. Vazards bury their head dead in the fertile ground, not the life. So just to confirm here, yeah, well, this person has some rationale and some mysticism. You'd think that they would be... It would have a high enough check for Pray for the Dead, which would generally be the mysticism check. So we're going to look for an exit. In the dark, the faintest ray of light is plainly visible. That's what allows you to quickly find an exit and leave this haunted place. The party's accuracy is raised by 5%. So I, honestly, like speaking of mysticism, pure, purely, you know, uh, uh, theory crafting as to how to make good choices in, uh, on the events. It's something I would, you know, try and, and uh, decipher over time, I suppose. So uh, this is going to be a little bit different for me. I haven't seen any combat in the Augur's Mountain yet. So let's uh, see what this looks like. It looks like we start in some brush, which is interesting. Vicious trap. So uh, we've got a, a set of uh, different party members here. And we can just like keep them in the center. What do these, um, what do these guys have? They have two movements, so they want they shouldn't be able to get to us in time. We've got some pretty good initiative, just to start. And in fact, we can catch up to them pretty quickly. Uh, this lad has poisoning, and they also have spiritual assault. Uh, I don't want to. Oh, that ha that causes zero spirit. Okay, so we can actually do that. It's a it's a pretty good attack does some nice uh, decent damage and we can still attack them if we want but um this spiritual assault actually costs movement so we can't get up to them right away which is fine with me our lad here uh, uh turfs they are the, i think the rational member of our group no they're the brutal member of our group of the dk crew um they have wild spirit but uh they don't have enough spirit points to spend it um or, or use it i have been using my spirit pretty pretty liberally in this game mode well, we're just gonna walk over and we're gonna do a couple dart thorns uh apparently that also does poison or uh, i think i actually have a weapon that applies poison so that's why that's happening um and we have here this this person has the ability to teleport which is pretty pretty cool. I'm not sure why they can't teleport over there. It seems to be only over there, which is interesting. I wonder if I could move over here and then opening. Yeah, there we go. So let's teleport over there. I'm not sure if this attacks adjacent 
targets yet so we we don't want to um you know we, we we have the potential to hurt our own allies if we're not careful and we have this jostle jostle will punch an enemy away from them which is kind of cool and then they'll have to take time uh walking back we could have done it again but we've unfortunately punched them farther away than we are able to move so these lads have quite a bit of movement um, i wasn't uh I didn't know that they could move that far. Ouch. And they hurt pretty pretty hard. They, they hit hard. So this lad here, um, actually we've got a good move here. We could, um, they've got this sparring. They don't have, they have just barely enough points to, to, to use it effectively. We're gonna use the sparring to come over here and attack two units at once. Which is pretty cool. And then we'll also uh, throw an attack at this other Ravenclaw. Let's see what our initiative looks like. Very good. Our whole party is moving uh, ahead of the enemy, which is really decent. Let's uh, just run over here and do some basic attacks. We don't want to spend any more spirit points. Ooh, that was a crit. I love the animations on the crits. They look like super nice. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I do wish uh, it was a little bit easier to tell whose turn it is. I think we missed. Another crit. And then we'll come in with our last dude here and hopefully that'll kill that lad. And this guy's got a passive that whenever they kill someone, they uh, heal a little bit. So that's the, hence why that we had that little glow. Again, the party moves ahead, so we're going to go ahead and uh, run over here and just like completely gang up on this one Ravenclaw dude. We got another crit and another crit. Very good stuff. Uh, we're not going to be able to reach them, so we'll just go as far as we can. We'll poison them a couple times. do some basic attacks they're gonna get one attack off oh no they've uh, okay so they've they did a debuff which is fine with me because they're about to die kill no not kill kill there we go easy enough and nice about uh thing about this is no one really took any damage so we can definitely uh use our next campsite to either train or run away from the shade so everyone's level three I again kind of started with uh, a mixed level party so you can see that like the amount of uh xp people require kind of catches up our low levels to our high levels pretty quickly uh, i'm definitely going to double down on mysticism this is our our spell caster and they have we could do uh, magical defense which is fine but i think extra hp would just be a good idea and we'll pick from a passive good good uh oh wow they've got a legendary coming up apparently inflicts three ap this costs one spirit point and uh inflicts negative three ap negative two mp and negative 10 dodge for one turn or gain one mde every two levels starting at level one let's do that actually it seems a strange thing to, to pick a common or over an uncommon, but this is just going to, like, give us more magical defense. And Brogs. Brogs is very brutal. We're going to, you know, double and triple down on brutality. We can give him extra initiative or extra critical damage. Um, yeah, let's give him extra critical damage. Why not? And again, we'll go active and passive. Gain one strength for three turns each time you deal physical damage. Ooh. Or inflicts 1420 physical damage and removes two MP from the target for one turn. Wow. This uh, takes our entire uh, like turns AP and some movement points as well, but seems really good. Also has a cooldown. I don't know. I think sadism is actually just the way to go. Just passively gaining extra uh, strength like every turn. And depending on what moves we mo use, we might be able to gain a multiple strength per turn. I 
I have mixed feelings about the the bird sounds in the background. I kind of like them, but I, I definitely see myself getting really tired of that sound. All right. So here's our campsite. Um, we're definitely going to run so that we increase our uh, the time before the, the shade reaches us. I think the the shade is basically like maybe the last boss. So, you know, we want to we want to train and and combat and do events as much as we can before we fight it. Lying on the road you sp spot the corpse of an auger cloaked in dark smoke. Could it be the shade and is Brog's our brutal one? No. Very odd. I don't understand why we can't do anything else. Hit the smoke, I suppose. You feel a burning bite on your arm and jerk away. Looks like the smoke can't be hit. Negative 15 health points. Is that permanently or just like they lose some health? Oh no, they just lost some health. Okay, they didn't permanently lose health. That would be crazy. The ground is shaking. Flocks of birds are fleeing away. Darkness darkening the sky. You look at the top of the mountain and you, you can see an avalanche rushing towards you. Don't stop. Keep walking. Uh, those both seem like the same thing, but okay, keep keep walking. Why not? Not even flinching in front of nature's wrath, you make haste to evade the avalanche. This imposed travel travel pace could make you save some time. If you survive the fight with the croak hood, that's blocking your way, that is. The fog fades away. You earn five days. Nice. So we've gained quite a lot of uh, time against the shade. And we're going to do one more combat. I think I'll do this combat and then I will uh, call it. We've got tons of uh, equipment you might notice here. Uh, ooh, extra SP might be a good idea, especially for this lad. What are they currently using? Plus two defense. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, equip this. Okay, so they get to, they get to, you get to equip a basic item and an accessory. I think they are wearing it. Yeah, they have plus two SP. So that's good. Uh, turfs here, they're a brutal one. Could they wear, use this br uh, beak blade? Dart of thorns. Those who survive it, remember it for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and equip that. And I want Brog's here. Brog's got that cool passive. I want them to use... A dart of thorns so that they can attack more per turn and uh, therefore uh, increase their strength quicker and then um, we could equip flaying sword or primitive spear on someone but I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things are uh, you feel quite stylish oh brogs should definitely wear this yeah so now they have a extra four strength um, we can increase our critical on this lad. More people should be wearing stuff. All right, there we go. So we're going to be fighting a crow cook, which seems like a, a beefy lad. And then after this, I will, I'll wrap, uh, things up and I'll, I'll maybe talk a little bit how, about how I feel about the game. Um, all right. So this seems fine. It's uh, this seems like a boss. What is this non-player character sheet? Yeah, I did uh, at one point. It seemed interesting. Wait. Oh, there's another lad hiding in the bushes. I didn't see that. Um, I saw I, I did an event where I gained an extra party member and they seem to act on their own. They had their own uh, autonom uh, autonomy, which is an interesting way of doing things. So I'm going to see if I can poison this lad right away. This is our, our uh, one of our extra spells that uh, Demos, Demios has. And this is going to poison them, this guy right away. And it's uncurable, so they should be able to make, you know, gain a bit of extra damage. Or take a bit of extra damage. What is this? Opening teleport. No, we don't need to do that. Let's just run in and do some basic damage. And I think that's, yeah, that's the one that poisons them. And sadism, yeah, is going to increase their strength every time they attack. That seems just ridiculously good. Let's run in and do some more uh, damage. 
If we can uh, take this boss down as quickly as possible, that'd be really good. Dark protection. I don't know what that does. I think, yeah, we've got, we got a good initiative roll again. Um, we're not going to be able to make it over there. So why don't we just like hit them with the spiritual assault and then do like a one walk over. Brogs, uh, is this Brogs? Yeah, Brogs coming over and doing some increased damage with their ink. Oh no, they, that guy dodged. He dodged. There we go. We can come in and, and do even more damage with that sadism. Stab. We are making very short work of uh, this boss. We, we should be able to kill the next round. Oh, in fact, they are dead now because of all the extra poison they, uh, damage they took. Okay, not the greatest initiative, but that's okay. We should be able to hit this guy twice, but that, that spirit um, attack is just like really good. And we even critted them, so that's nice. We'll move a little bit just to make room for someone else. Uh, we're not going to be able to make it all the way over there, but that's fine. We'll come over here. We should be able to kill them, maybe? Yeah, just barely. Mwahaha. Victory. All right. I'm gonna fight against the crow cook. So we there is uh, this meta progression as well where we will unlock a new skills for future games. So we've unlocked protective bubble um, uh, for something that um, anyone else can can discover both on this game and in the future as well. Which is uh, you know I, I think a good way of doing things. Like you unlock uh, stuff you know from your milestones, milestone achievements. Does anyone level up? Our level three lads, maybe? Yes. Was that three levels? Three level ups? I'm gonna triple down on brutality. Ooh, plus four strength. Yes, please. Um, let's do two passives and pick from one. Gain one strength every three turns. Each turn you deal. Yeah, I mean, I like this a lot. Uh, inflict three bleeding to the target to which you inflict physical damage. I mean, this is really nice too, but that uh, extra strength um, seems just like really good. Um, yeah, let's increase ra rationale. Uh, hard to say no to that strength. They don't have any spells that like deal magic damage. Uh, they do have this really nice trap, but you have to make it work. What do we have? Inflicts 26 to 34 damage and negative 6 AP to the I mean, we have another cool trap. Or gain 20 dodge until your next turn when an enemy dodges an attack. Um, interesting. I mean, I like this blinding trap. There's cool passives you can get that actually benefit all of your traps. So that's something cool to, to maybe work with. Effective against cold insects and dagger strikes. A nice crow's eyes souvenir. We'll see uh, how the events of that combat maybe play out. So, uh, I like this game. Um, I like that it refuses to do sort of the standard roguelike thing. Um, I do wish it was a little bit clearer uh, what your choices meant in events. Like, what are you rolling against? What, what metal are you testing exactly? Um, it feels like your choice is testing different, you know, traits, but it's not very clear how that's working. So I wish that was a little bit more clear. Um, <clears throat> I like, I like the way, you know, I, I like some of the legacy uh, mechanics we got going on, like the spirit stuff. Um, and the combat itself, I mean, it doesn't seem particularly deep, but I don't mind because actually building the characters and comboing 
um, you know, actives and passives together is very compelling. And the way you choose those is, is it's both simple and also um, sort of display some long-term strategy, which I really appreciate. So all in all, I, I actually, I really like what this game's got going on. And obviously I really like the art style, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's good to kind of, you know, ask the, ask the question, is it style over substance? And I don't think so. I think that this game is both style and substance and is, uh, is doing a lot to set itself apart. Um, but not just like reinventing the wheel, you know? So let's see here. The corpse of the Daunting Crow Cook lies in front of you. Who knows how many Vazards it has eaten to reach this size. You could take a token of your victory, but what would be fitting? Grade its claws or take out its beak? Take out its beak. You carefully cut out its beak, which takes a while. It's pretty resistant. It would be perfect for a weapon. You pick up the weapon beak blade again. Ideally sharpened to cut through worms. We've got another beak blade. So yeah, let's call it there, um, and I'll we'll, we'll go back to the uh, main menu just to to look at the stunning uh, main menu art again. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll wrap this up. Uh, if you want to check out in the description, there'll be a link to uh, Aetheris. Aetheris. And uh, yeah, let me know. Maybe you've played it, uh, played this game as well. You let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video or gotten anything from it, please, uh, you know, consider hitting the like button and uh, subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.